Hey guys, what's going on? I'm building this four mil Banshee right now and I figured I'd make a little how-to video for you guys. Today what I'm gonna be talking about is checking your ring gap. It's a really simple concept, but you know, it wasn't too long ago that I never checked my ring gap. And if you don't know what it is, it can sound a little bit daunting and intimidating, but it's really simple to do. So stick around, I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, guys, I'm going to do the best I can here to give you clear, visible images so that you guys can understand exactly what I'm doing. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is check the ring gap on our piston rings. And what our ring gap is, is this gap right here at the end of either of our pist piston rings when the piston is, or when this ring is compressed. Now, the way to check that is fairly easy. And just a note real quick, if you see this little N here, whatever side of your piston ring has the manufacturer markings is the top of the ring. So you can see this side doesn't have anything. So that's the bottom. And that little N indicates that this is the top of the ring. But regardless, we're going to take our ring and put it in our cylinder. And before I go sliding that in, I'm going to put the piston in. This is going to help us square up that ring. I'll show you what I mean in a second here. So I'm just going to gently slide this piston in. Okay. Now I'm going to take the ring and compress it and fit it in our cylinder. Okay, so now the ring is in there, but you want to make sure that it's nice and flush. So that's why our piston's in here. So we're going to come up with the piston and just push until that ring is nice and even. All right, so there we go. And now that's our ring gap right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. And what we're going to do is take our feeler gauge now, depending on what you're uh, working on, you're going to have a different ring gap. Now, typically, it, if you read uh, most of the instructions that come with pistons, they say it's four thousandths of an inch per inch of the bore. So our bore is about three inches, so we want 12 thousandths. And what you want to do is measure that tiny little gap in between your ring. and it fits. So this ring is good. This one clears. Now I'm not going to measure all of the rest of them right in front of you. I'm going to go ahead and do that. But that's how you measure ring gap. A lot of people think that's a scary thing to do. But when you see how it's done, it's pretty simple. Now it's important to check your ring gap because if you don't have the right gap in your engine and you run it, you're going to get engine damage. Now I'm going to do my best here to show you with a drawing what happens in your motor once the rings heat up. So I have this drawing here, this is your piston ring. Now we're also pretending that it's in the cylinder, so it's compressed. So this is what your piston ring would look like when the engine's cold. You still have your gap here, which is what you want to measure before you put your piston in. Now as things heat up, this ring expands. And as it expands, this gap gets closer and closer. And if you have your specs done correctly, there should be just about no gap once your, mo your motor is at running temperature. And that's the importance of that is because if there's no, if the gap, the smaller the gap is, the less gases are gonna escape and the more compression you're gonna have and the better performance. So ideally that's what you want. If your rings are measured correctly, they're just barely gonna be touching or there's gonna be a barely any gap in between them to give you the most compression. Now, if they're not measured correctly and they're too big, what's gonna happen is these ends are gonna, they're gonna butt up against each other right there and it's going to push the ring out and oblong it. And what that's going to do is put ex excess pressure on your cylinder and cause wear. And also the rings start to concave a little bit from rubbing so much on the cylinder. And it's going to cause engine damage. Now, if you're checking your ring gap and the gap's a little bit too big, you're better off having a bigger gap than a smaller gap. The small gap's going to create damage. Whereas if your gap's a little bit too big, 
you're just going to lose a tiny little bit of compression. I mean, if you're not building a race bike or anything, you're probably going to be perfectly fine if, you know, if the spec calls for, let's say, 12 thousandths and you measure your specs and it's at, you know, 13 or 14 thousandths, you know, if you're just a little bit over, just run it. You're going to be fine. But if you're under, even if it's at like 0 0.0, zero, you know, one, one, you want to shave it down a little bit. I'm telling you, you're going to cause engine damage. So that in short is what happens with the rings in your motor once it heats up and why it's important to check your ring gap. Now, if your ring gap is too big, it might be time to get some new rings or possibly it's time to bore out your motor and get a bigger piston. All right, guys, please remember to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content and it helped you out. If you have any other how-to videos that you want me to do, please leave a comment in the comment section below or shoot me an email at michaelsabo350 at gmail.com. Also, remember to add me on Instagram. It's michaelsabo350. On that page, I share a lot of your guys' projects, and I also have updates on what's going on in my shop. All right, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.